Hi, my name is Cole. I'm a member of Group 5 along with Marcus, Omar, Zushin, and Charles. And we're going to be doing our project on the fraud of waste management. Waste management is North America's leading provider of integrated environmental solutions. They're also North America's largest recycler. They have over 1,000 natural gas powered trucks, which makes them the largest fleet in the waste hauling industry. And they provide enough energy to power over 1 million homes every year. Next slide is when was the fraud perpetrated? The financial statements were falsified and misrepresented from 1992 to 1997. During this period, the perpetrators fraudulently manipulated the company's financial results to meet target earnings and then resorted to improperly eliminating and deferring current period expenses. Next slide is how the fraud was committed. The perpetrators avoided depreciation expenses on their garbage trucks by assigning inflated salvage values and extending their useful lives. They assigned arbitrary values to assets that previously had no salvage values. They failed to report expenses for decreases in the value of their landfills. And they also refused to report expenses to write off the cost of unsuccessful development projects. How the fraud was continued, committed continued. They established and inflated environmental reserves related to acquisitions so that the excess revenues could be used to avoid recording unrelated operating expenses. They improperly capitalized expenses. And they also established insufficient reserves to pay for income taxes and expenses. Now I'm going to move on to Marcus, who's going to talk to you about how the fraud was discovered. Thanks, Cole. Uh, my name is Marcus, and I'm going to talk about how the fraud was discovered. The perpetrator's scheme unraveled in July 1997, when the new CEO ordered a review of the company's accounting practices. The review led to the restatement of the financial statements for 1992 through July 1997. After filling the restate financial statements in February 1998, the company acknowledged it had misstated earnings by $1.7 billion. Auditors' Involvement Waste management was aided in their fraud by their longtime auditors. Arthur Anderson received a premium on the fees for performing special work. Special work included 32 must-do action steps to cover up past fraud by committee, committing additional frauds in the future. Anderson presented company management with proposed adjusting journal entries to correct errors that understated expenses and overstated earnings. There were six people involved in the waste management fraud. They were Dean L. Buntrock, founder and CEO, Philip B. Rooney, President and Chief Operating Officer, James E. Koenig, Executive VP and CFO, Thomas C. Howe, Controller and CAO, Herbert Getz, Senior VP, Secretary, Bruce D. Tobixson, VP of Finance. Roles of the Perpetrators Buntrock, the founder and CEO, was the ben primary beneficiary of the fraud. He received more than $16.9 million. He received that money mostly from performing performance-based bonuses, retirement benefits, selling corporate stock, and charitable giving. He fostered a culture of fraudulent accounting within waste management. Another perpetrator was uh, Rudy, president and COO. He received $9.2 million from performance-based bonuses and selling company stock. He ensured that the required write-offs were not recorded, and he overruled accounting decisions that would ultimately lead to negative impact on operations. I'm now going to turn it over to Omar, who will talk about the other <coughs> perpetrators. Thanks, Marcus. James Coney, he received $900,000. He was primarily responsible for executing the scheme, ordered the destruction of damaging evidence, withheld evidence from outside auditors. Thomas Howe, controller, CAO, gained $600,000. Considered principal technician behind the schemes, devised many one-off accounting manipulations to attain target earnings, crafted deceptive disclosures. Bruce Topixson, VP of Finance, gained 400000 known as Koning's right-hand man. Herbert Getz, Senior VP, Secretary, gained 450000 contributed to the fraudulent financial disclosures. Who was affected by the fraud? Shareholders. They were the most affected by the scheme. Estimated losses of six billion in the market. In the market value of their investments, stock prices dropped by more than 33 percent. 
Waste management's reputation was affected. SEC's reaction stated that Anderson knowingly or recklessly issued false and misleading unqualified audit reports. Anderson failed to stand up to management to prevent the issuance of materially misstated financial statements. Also, three Arthur Anderson audit partners were fined. Anderson was fined $7 million with regards to their involvement with waste management. That was the largest fine ever imposed on any company. And now we'll turn it over to Charles. Thanks, Omar. Again, my name is Charles, and I'll be talking about the audit program. The audit program consists of two major sections. First section deals with internal controls, which is the systems portion section. Second section deals with uh, financial statement account balances, which is substantive procedures portion. What is the systems portion planned around? The systems portion is planned around the major transaction cycles, which are the revenue cycle, the acquisition cycle, the conversion cycle, the payroll cycle, the investing cycle, and the finance cycle. Audit procedures include obtaining an understanding for the controls of each cycle, preparing a flow chart for each cycle, testing significant controls, and assessing control risk for the financial statement assertions. Tests of controls provide two types of evidence. Evidence effectiveness of internal controls and substantive evidence of recorded information. After evaluation of the evidence, auditors will now make modifications in the substantive procedures portion, in which Zushin will now discuss. Thank you, Charles. I'm Zuchen. I'll be going over the audit procedures of substantive, substantive procedures to detect fraud. So specific audit objectives for inventory is to ensure assets are presented at net realizable value, to avoid misstatement of the salvage value or emission of depreciation. We must analyze the accounting principles applied or generally accepted principles, test the accuracy of the client's application, and the method of evaluation on assets. Vouch the acquisition cost of assets to pay checks and documentary evidence. Evaluate reasonable, reasonableness of cost allocation and verify com computation of remaining unallocated costs. Compare file valued assets to prices on existing markets or examine the valuation method used to develop these values. The specific audit objectives for accounting pay accounts payable. To determine proper cutoff dates for transactions, to ensure expenses are recorded on the period incurred and not deterred to subsequent periods. Obtain an age trial balance of payables, test its clerical accuracy, and reconcile the ledgers, two ledgers. Vouch purchases and cash disbursements occurring at period end. And these are the procedures that we must go through to determine if there's any fraud going on. Thank you guys for your patience and thank you for paying attention. So let me know if you have any questions or let any of us know. Thank you.